All right, we're here oh. talking to uh, Mark Portier. Oh. We're here talking to Mark Portier, <laughs> um, who's going to show us a, a little something about uh, Microsoft Teams and the calling features. Okay. So let's get on in here and awesome. look this up. What are you putting in there? <laughs> All right. Great. So one of the things that we've really been working on uh, this last year is making sure that everybody who's using uh, Skype for Business and using it for Enterprise Voice can use all those features in Microsoft Teams. Because mm. we think that like communications and collaboration really are, are co-mingled, right? You have to have great communications to be able to do good collaboration. And right now, Teams is mostly chat-based, and we've been able to do VoIP calling since March, but we're really now moving into PSTN, and we're moving into all the other types of features that we use for, for meetings and calling as well. And we want to make sure that's a, like a fully formed, fully functional client um, for all the communication capabilities. Uh, so, you know, what, one of the things that we did uh, really early on was we looked at, uh, for example, bringing contacts in from Skype for Business because there's a bunch of people that have been entering in contacts for years in Skype for Business. They end up with thousands. They organize them into groups. Um, and third parties that help you to try and transfer those contacts between different clients. Yeah, so, yeah, that too. Yeah, it's really and so one of the things we do is um, now with Teams, when we have this deployed, this is all in preview right now, but when it goes live, we'll be able to uh, just import all the contacts from Skype for Business and all the groups that you've created just right into Teams. And so they'll be there and, and you can jump right and, into And them. so I can see that. I can see that there's an engineering group, yep. a marketing group. And sometimes these groups are based on Office 365 groups or even uh, DLs, functional DLs. They are, they're automatically populated by yep. who you've put in there. Yep. Uh, that's, well, I, so I'm not sure about these. I think these will actually be um, managed Manually created manually, from users, right. yeah. So it'll be that set. So it'll really be per user coming in, and, sure. and your stuff will be there. Um, from these, of course, you know, this is a convenient way to check on people's availability. Um, you can easily just jump around and find somebody that you want to talk to, click into it, and uh, you know, pull up the last chat that you've had with them. So let's say you know, I can log into Adele and see what she's been talking. One of the things that, like during my initial session with Lori, that we we talked about was that you know I can click and, and resume a conversation. And that's true, I can click and resume a conversation with the Teams chat. Um, but we're not going to be importing all the SFB chats that exist into Teams. Right? So that, that won't be there Understandably, right Understandably, there's a lot there. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot there. So calling is really where, where the fun is, uh, at least for me, because that's what my team delivers. And um, what we have is, is uh, we have a full sort of calling client already These are built all contact cards? Teams. You can hover over and get the full contact? Uh, these are actually just uh, speed dial cards. And oh, so right. we've kind of created like a speed dial list that you can just go ahead and click on and call right away. Okay. Um, there'll be additional information that you can go get to and get to the full contact card. Um, and you can also go ahead and, and uh, you know, do chats and, and other things with them. Um, but eventually, we'll also layer in LinkedIn data, so you'll be able to go look at people and get information about their profiles. Yeah, yeah, we're quite excited about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it'd be really cool. Um, other things is we're looking at you know generating suggested contacts, so people that have called you or you call frequently, or people that might be on your calendar coming up. So suggested contacts being, as you say, people who have called you, then you have the option to save it to contact somewhere. Yeah, you could go ahead and create a custom contact, save it in, and, and that would be there. Um, also, we might look at things like your calendar and say, are you meeting with people on a very frequent basis? Should they really be part of your speed dial list? Mm. Or is somebody that you want to capture as a contact moving forward? So contacts is pretty much what you would expect. For people that have like thousands and thousands of contact, we created an alphabetical list as well. Um, so they can <laughs> go through and search. Yeah. Yes, it's important. History is pretty much what you would expect as well. So the incoming and outgoing calls are all there. Um, and voicemail is kind of along the same line. So I can go ahead and click into a voicemail, expand it, oh, read wow. the transcript, and sort of view it in line. So it's a nice visual voicemail um, thing. Yeah. So we also have a, obviously the dialer, and I don't know if anybody's actually dialed a phone number since like 1963, but um, may, maybe since the advent of, of cell phones, that's gone away. But so uh, if I'm looking at this closely, I know that um, with with uh, Skype, you actually drop in your number into the search box if you want to dial yep. it by copy and paste. Yep. Where do you do that on the page? You there? can go ahead and just you know, oh, drop it, it in there. right yep. here. Yep. If you like, um, we're going to support search and, and calling as well. Um, but you'll be able to call, you know, based on how you're provisioned and how you're set up with a with a you know an enterprise voice um, or you know PSTN add-on. You'll be able to make international calls, national calls. Uh, it'll support extension dialing within your company. E911 is also supported, so emergency calls are there, so we're compliant. Um, everything that you really need is, is present. One thing that we, we know about is that you know we're building up the capabilities in Skype for Business today, 
um, and we're not, or in Microsoft Teams, and we're not quite at parity with Skype for Business, right? And it's going to take, you know, it's going to take a little time. We're moving very aggressively on this. Yeah, such things as hunt groups and, and getting into the, the like, larger um, management of calls with multiple people. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like um, uh, even boss admin, so the ability to, you know, field calls for your, your executive, for example, and take them right. on their behalf yeah, awesome. or make calls on their behalf. Yeah. So those are coming really soon, but in the meantime, like, we don't want to stop people from adopting this and using it. So what we've done is we've we've created um, a set of IT policies that people can use to determine where they want to route their calls. So under calls, I can come in and I can select whether I want to get my calls in Microsoft Teams or Skype for Business. So if you've already deployed Skype for Business and you're really happy with it and you're afraid that maybe there's a portion of your population or, or your, your employees that still need to use it because they have special, you know, special requirements, you can continue having them go use that. And you can control this through IT policy or you can grant them the choice um, so that they can determine whether or not Teams is ready for that. Right, so, and they're making that choice within Teams, so that, that is them saying they still want to use Teams yep. and, and all that Teams is, but they just want to keep Skype separate for now. They, they want to get their calls in Skype, right? Yeah. And so this gives you some flexibility until we hit that parity point, and as we start to add more and more beyond that, you know, hopefully people will see this real value in just doing all your calling workload from here. Um, we'll layer in the intelligent communications features that we're thinking about, and really it'll just become a, a far superior client over what we have. So one of the things that, that we do experience um, with uh, receiving calls and we might be signed into multiple devices yeah. um, and it rings in multiple places mm -hmm. at the same time is that uh, still a reasonably smooth experience yeah it's uh, just on by default so we call everywhere where you have an endpoint and you'll be able to pick it up and, and receive that call just receive it. you want yep. yeah that's good yep okay so that's a little bit of the calling story um, a lot more coming and uh, yeah we're pretty excited to bring it it's great thank you Mark yeah you're welcome thank you Lee.